just talking about the ISO file, let's actually look at that because one of the features that I wanted to look at tonight is uh, how to uh, burn CDs in Linux. Uh, Guest2482, yeah, you can actually download the CD ISO of Ubuntu off of their website. And what an ISO is, is basically it's like an image of a CD in its entirety. So you download that, and then you can actually place that onto a CD, and it won't, uh, it won't cause any problems with, uh, like, it will actually be like an exact duplicate of the original disk. So let's just take a quick boo at some of the software that we can use in Ubuntu. Um, now, <laughs> I guess you're not going to be able to burn a, a, an Ubuntu ISO this way. But in Windows, if you're using Windows, for example, you can get... Uh, you should be able to use your whatever CD application you're using. Nero works with uh, ISO files. Uh, there's a free one, CD Burner XP, which is excellent. Uh, if you, I think it's a .NET application and it's free, uh, as in price. So that's a little better for uh, if you want to just burn something. But uh, as far as Ubuntu goes, this is Ubuntu Linux. Oh, oh no! I clicked on a spreadsheet. Oh well, it didn't take too long. Just burn it up. I'll just burn it, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Ubuntu Linux, a base install. We've just done a little bit of tweaking over the past couple of weeks, which you can actually see those tweaks on the show. Um, and it comes with a great suite of applications. Right out of the box, it comes with a burning application called Bracero. And if we click on that, I really like some of the features of Bracero. Uh, we can obviously create things like an audio project, data project. Those are the main ones that you're going to do if you're working with CDs. Uh, DVDs, you can do a DVD data project, which is really awesome if you want to do like a backup. It's 4.7 to 9 gigs, depending on whether you're using uh, dual layer or not. One of the greatest things about Bracero, I think, though, is the disk copy feature. It will do an exact copy of a, a CD or DVD, not with decryption or anything like that. So we're not talking about making illegal copies of DVDs. We're talking about if you've got a DVD backup or a DVD of family photos and you want to run those off uh, for a friend or family member, you can do a disk copy. But what's so cool about that? You only need one drive, which is very nice. So what it'll actually do is it will copy, you pop the first disk in, it will copy that to your hard drive and create an image of that disk, just like the ISOs we were just talking about, and then it will prompt you to pop in the next disk, and then it will actually burn that uh, ISO. So it's not like the old days where we used to have to have two drives so that you could run a copy from one to the other. Uh, so that's a really nice feature. And then the other stuff is just, you know, this standard stuff that you would expect from a, a CD burning application. If you want to create a data project, you'll see your files over on the left-hand side. You highlight the ones that you want to add, and you can use control click to add multiple items. And once you've highlighted an item, you can just go add up at the top here, and that will throw that right on your project. Another nice thing here is if you're working on a project, and you get called away, and you've got to go or do something or whatever, you can close Procero, and the next time that you bring it up, right off the menu, it's not going to give you that options menu anymore. It's actually going to load that project just as it was the last time that you were in there. If you want to clear your project, you can click on Empty Project, and now, next time you load it up, you're going to get that menu prompt once again. So it's just kind of nice because you don't have to worry about you know, saving files and things like that if you're in the middle of a, a detailed project or things like that. If you guys have any questions for me specifically about what I'm showing, just uh, mention it in the chat room, Category5.tv. Uh, moving along, there is uh, another application that I really like for burning, and that's called K3B. It's technically a, a KDE application, but nice thing about Ubuntu, even with GNOME and, and any Linux with GNOME, you can actually install KDE applications. And it's not dangerous or anything like that. And this is something that doesn't come with Ubuntu. This is something that we grab from our Synaptic Package Manager. So System, Administration, Synaptic Package Manager. Enter your password. This is your sudo password. <coughs> First time you run Synaptic Package Manager each session, just press the reload button up at the top left. That's going to get your latest package information. And under your search, just type K3B. This is available for previous versions of Ubuntu as well, so this is not limited to only Intrepid. Uh, you can see that I've already got it installed, but if you click on that, you can go Mark for Installation, and then just hit Apply up at the top here, and that's how you get a copy of K3B reason that I already installed it for us today is because we want to just be able to skim through this real quick, and it does take a little while to install K3B. I think there's 11 packages because it actually has to install some libraries if you've never installed any KDE applications, uh, which allow you to run KDE applications within GNOME. So I'll bring up that application so that you can see how that works. And you're going to find it, both of these under sound and video, K3B only once it's installed. 
If you don't like the splash, you can disable it. So this is K3B. And you'll see that the interface is kind of pretty. It's, uh, you know, some Linux users don't like it, but if you're coming from Windows especially, I think that this is a really great interface. Uh, it really, when I moved over to Linux, it reminded me of Easy CD Creator, which is the software that I used to use way back in the day. Um, and so this was, you know, a nice, easy migration for me. Um, you can create the same thing, audio CD projects, data CD projects, etc., etc., copy CDs, burn your CD image, which we were talking about there. If you get an ISO file off the internet, like an Ubuntu CD, you can actually burn that image. Uh, and then they, you can do DVD ISOs as well. So in this case, it's a little bit of a different layout, but if I click on new data projects, see how much more similar this is to a Windows style interface? So then I drag that file and I drop it. There's no having to click add or anything like that. You can drag folders if you want and drop it etc etc so then when you're done you just click on the burn button over here go through your settings and you're good to go so these are all freely available on Ubuntu so very very nice and any Linux distribution will have access to these applications um, Gleep Werp in the chat room says in K3B you can even burn self-booting video DVDs woot a self burn a self-booting self video DVD video DVD neat is that good? Sounds great. Good. Uh, Thomas Gilling says he said you can run them in GNOME. Yeah, K3B uh, can be run in GNOME, absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. I installed it. As you see, this is a GNOME interface. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what GNOME means, this is the interface that we're using on this version of Linux, which is Ubuntu. If you've got Kubuntu, it's going to be KDE. But as you can see, this is GNOME, uh, just a straight Ubuntu installation, and I've got under sound and video K3B. So it is a KDE application, but as you can see, it runs just fine under GNOME. Um, and it will automatically, from Synaptic, it will automatically install any dependencies that are required in order to make it work uh, under GNOME. Um, Thomas Gilling is just asking if you need the KDE or Qt libraries? It'll actually install Qt automatically, I believe. Everything that's required, it will do it automatically for you, Thomas. So no, no having to worry about that. Okay. Good stuff. 